horror film that was directed by first-time director Natalie Erica James. It initially was released in Sundance in January, and then it recently, in July, I think July 10th, which was last week, released on IFC Midnight. It stars Emily Mortimer. You might recognize her from films like the Pink Panther series or... Uh, Shutter Island. I mean, she's been in a whole bunch of stuff. Bella Heathcote is also in this movie, and then you have Robin Nevin. And what this story is, is it's a story about family more than anything else. So there's a mother in this film played by Emily Mortimer and her daughter, Bella Heathcote. They decide to go visit the grandmother in her house. They have heard word that she disappeared and nobody can find her. So they go to stay at the grandmother's house, and then lo and behold, before long, the grandmother shows up, and everything seems okay except it's not. Grandmother is suffering from dementia, so there are a couple of moments throughout their stay where she will lose her mind or she'll lash out in anger, and you know, it's a tough thing to deal with, but then they start to realize maybe there's something else sinister going on with the house. There's a bunch of creepy, strange things that start happening that kind of coincide with the grandmother coming back to the house, and thus we have a horror movie about dementia and things that go bump in the night. Fun fact, did you guys know that Jake Gyllenhaal actually produced this movie? Or he was one of the producers on this movie? I I don't know what that information does for you, but hey, Jake Gyllenhaal. Just a fun thing to see one of my favorite actors attached to a project like this with a first time director. There's some good Jakes out there in the world now that I think about it. Jake was the leader of the Animorphs. And then you have Jake Gyllenhaal and then Jake rhymes with Drake. We can't discount that. You have Jake from uh, State Farm. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of good jakes out there in the world. Pushing all of that aside, I am going to tell you guys right now that I can tell beyond a shadow of a doubt that there are going to be a lot of people that do not like this movie. This is going to be another one of those artsy, fartsy, divisive horror movies. What I mean by that is that this is not your typical horror film. This is not a horror film that relies on scares or a monster or some big evil external force. I mean, yeah, sure, there's creepy shit going on in the house and there is a reason for all of that. Similar to films like Hereditary or The Babadook or even The Witch, this is a film that really is more focused on the mental and emotional manifestations of trauma and dealing with dementia rather than it is about an external force. So if you're coming into this movie and you're looking for a horror movie with your typical scares, this movie's really more about inner demons than it is about actual demons and I can tell that right there people are just gonna, they're gonna sharpen the pitchforks, they're gonna jump ship, they're gonna abandon the train, they're gonna derail the train. They're, people don't like that type of movie. I know that there are people that do love that type of movie, but hey, there are also people in the world that love mushrooms, and we know those people are fucking crazy. Don't you get in my comment section bitching to me about the devil's fungus. I know everything I need to know about mushrooms. Putting aside my taste for mushrooms, I will say that I actually really really like this movie because it's one of those horror movies that's right up my alley. I'm more of an atmospheric horror fan because I don't really get scared at typical horror anymore. I don't really get scared at any movie anymore. So I appreciate the psychological horror. I appreciate the atmospheric horror that some directors are going for. Something that you're dealing with internally can sometimes be more frightening than what the actual thing in the movie is that you're supposed to be frightened of. That's why I really appreciated the approach that this director took to building tension, building dread, throughout the movie and building the dynamic between these three women. Because that's where the movie is at its absolute best. I will single out the performances. All three of them absolutely kill it. Emily Mortimer, I mean, she's been good in almost everything I've seen her in. She gives an incredible performance. Bella Heathcote, same thing here. Star of the show absolutely is Robin Nevin. She crushes it, she destroys it, depicting a woman whose mind and surroundings are deteriorating around her. There is one thing that I think the people and the producers and writers that wrote this movie are trying to leave you with. It's it's the idea that maybe dementia is not just about the individual who's afflicted, it's about who else it can afflict because dementia can affect the family in a lot of very traumatic and emotional ways. Me personally, I have not had to actually physically deal with someone who has had dementia, but I have family members and I have friends who have dealt with that. It is no joke. It is a very painful and emotional process and definitely I feel like it was portrayed accurately in this movie. Watching someone who's losing themselves and it's kind of like you're not just watching her lose herself and all sense of self, but she's also losing sense of self as it relates to you because you don't recognize who she's becoming and then she doesn't recognize you. Along with the great filmmaking, the slow pans and the great use of zooming to really build that dread that I mentioned earlier, kind of an external thing with this house 
but really it's much more about the other stuff that relates to dementia. That's the kind of movie that you're walking into. I do think the movie got off to kind of a slow start. Like in the beginning, there are just these weird, strange things happening with the house. And I wasn't fully invested with the characters in the situation. I feel like it just kind of took a little bit too long to get into the story that it was trying to tell. So the first 20 or so minutes, it's just, it was hard for me to get on board. I wasn't bored necessarily, but I was just, I was losing interest by the minute until the grandmother showed up and then all of a sudden things got a little bit more interesting. The biggest issue with the movie is actually the fact that some of the rules in terms of this house and some of the creepy stuff that's happening and this grandmother, they're not clearly defined and sometimes it just feels like the movie goes off on a tangent and anything can happen in this house. It was just kind of inconsistent in the way that it was portrayed, especially visually. Sometimes the movie played a little bit fast and loose with its rules and it kind of took me out of the movie a few times. I thought about giving this movie my highest rating, but I decided to hold back a little bit. I'm going to put this one in the Silver Age for Man of Steel. Those are my thoughts on Relics. So tell me what is the best horror movie that you personally have seen in 2020? Put that answer in the comment section down below. Please like and subscribe to the Super Fan Show. And as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel and stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace.